Everybody ready? All right, thanks for coming tonight. Uh, Ms. Clayley, invocation, please. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like, I'm going to be doing a verbal libation tonight. Um, and I'd like to begin with my husband playing the drum with my daughter. Um, tonight I'd like to honor one of our ancestors. His name is Dr. Edward Robinson, and tomorrow would have been his 100th birthday. The birth of Edward Wesley Robinson Jr. 100 years ago, on April 24th, 1918, in Philadelphia, laid the foundation for the birth of African consciousness and the academic excellence of black students. Robinson who became an ancestor at age 94 on June 13th, six years ago, was a historian, educator, professor, author, documentarian, filmmaker, and curriculum specialist who attended Central High School, Virginia State College for Negroes, now Virginia State University, Temple University School of Law, and the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. Robinson said, quote, never during all my years of America's best elementary schools, middle schools, junior high schools, high schools, colleges, and postgraduate schools was I ever taught anything about the huge body of information concerning the beauty, grandeur, and sophistication of Kemet, i.e. ancient Egypt, or the Songhai Empire. I was miseducated. Fortunately, though, I was later rescued from cultural and intellectual oblivion by the intervention of my ancestors, end quote. Thanks to his prolific, synthesized research, many people of African descent in Philadelphia now know about Africa's essential contributions to the world. Because of him, we now know that the father of medicine is Imhotep, an Egyptian, from circa 2650 BC, and not Hippocrates, a Greek who wasn't born until 2200 years later. We know that calculus, algebra, and geometry were invented in Egypt, in Egypt pre-1820 BC by Tishome, prior to the 1650 BC by Ahemes, and circa 1500 BC by Tacoma, respectively. We know that Herodotus, Herodotus the Greek so-called father of history was wrong when he claimed that the Babylonians in 43 BC were the first to divide the day into 24 temporal hours. Instead, it was the Egyptians who did it about 3,000 years earlier with their sundial and later their shadow clock. <coughs> and we now know that the first human beings on the planet were from the Nile Valley region of East Africa 200,000 years ago. We also know that even more recently, recently during the pre-colonial era, era, Africa excelled beginning in the 9th century, but primarily from the 15th century through the 16th century. This occurred in West Africa, particularly in the Songhai Empire, the largest empire in African history. As Dr. Robinson always proudly pointed out, it was filled with magnificent homes that housed scholars, physicians, judges, craftsmen, farmers, miners, and soldiers. It was a vital international commercial hub where gold, salt, textiles, bean, rice, and fish were traded. But most important, Timbuktu was its great intellectual center of the world that served as a repository for massively voluminous libraries. Timbuktu housed over 150 schools and a major university at Sankor with more than 25,000 25, <coughs> students who were expertly taught science, math, grammar, logic, law, and theology. And throughout the empire, books were such a valuable commodity that they were traded for gold. And so with that, I would just like to recognize the rich cultural history that we have in this district with all of our students of African descent, both those are who are from families who are from the continent of Africa and those who are descended from um, those who were enslaved and brought from Africa. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America 
and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Fitty. Uh, we have a lot to celebrate this month. Uh, we're almost at the end. All right, you're up. Uh, congratulations, Michael Hammond. Uh, Michael is a Penwood Junior, junior uh, enrolled in the Culinary Arts Votech program, and he competed in the Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America competition. So congratulations, Michael. Uh, Park Lane's out in the flea market. Uh, this Saturday, spots are still available, so please contact Mr. Kirkland uh, if you're interested and stop by for some good fun. Uh, East Lansdowne uh, students and teachers were honored for drug uh, awareness efforts. Uh, congratulations uh, to everyone involved. Um, here there was a big uh, award ceremony this weekend. A uh, special shout out to uh, Ms. Charlie Tong. Uh, Miss Fink and Miss Miles. Uh, we did a uh, rocket building this week with uh, this weekend with Comcast Cares and Penwood Foundation. It was a great time. All the kids made rockets. We talked about steam. It was a really good time. Uh, congratulations to Tyre Holder, a seventh grader at Penwood Middle School, who won first place in Maiden's Police Department's uh, patch design contest. Did the patch that. Uh, Mr. Holder uh, design will be unveiled on uh, flag day, June 9th. Then? June, yep. Uh, congratulations to uh, Penwood Middle School uh, students being inducted into the National Junior Honor Society. Uh, I think we have the little hobs over there on the, uh, yeah. <laughs> the left side. Uh, congratulations to Penwood Track and Field. Uh, both the girls and boys outdoor track teams won the spring 2018 Del, Del Valle League title. So congratulations, guys. Uh, congratulations to uh, Talis Gaymore and Nana Asamoa um, on being uh, Upper Darby Rotary uh, April Students of the Month. Thank you for that. Um, Talis is one of my favorite human beings, um, so I'm just sharing that too. Uh, Faith Olabunga, congratulations to the Olabunga family. Uh, she was a st STEM Scholar Recognition Award by the Eastern Delaware County Branch of the American Association of University Women. Um, these awards are presented to young women from each Delco uh, Public High School, showing a strong interest in STEM. Uh, the Olabunga family, I think there's three, or three daughters in front of her, and they're all pretty fat. Uh, congratulations, Nia. Uh, Nia Larity uh, re receive, will receive the National Silver Medal Award from the Alliance of Young Artists and Writers for her uh, written pieces. Uh, Jazz and Pasta is coming up this weekend. Uh, buy your tickets at info at penwoodband.com. Uh, stop by and have some pasta and uh, support our kids. Congratulations to Charlene Canning. Mia Larity and Alanis Williams for qualifying to compete in the Future Business Leaders of America State Leadership Conference. Uh, thanks, Ms. McGarvey. I also believe that Charlene has been elected president of the Pennsylvania FBLA for next year. Like I said, you'll be seeing her name a lot. Uh, Penwood, students want win the Boeing Philadelphia High School Business Proposal Competition. Congratulations to the students, uh, Mr. Joseph and Ms. Norton. Uh, there were 25 teams competing. Uh, they did awesome. Um, so congratulations. Uh, DCIU STEM Design Challenge, Ardmore <laughs> Avenue won the Best Design Award, and Penwood Middle School won the Most Creative Award. So congratulations to Ms. O'Boyle, Ms. Fry, 
and Ms. Uh, Peter Olson. Um, I mentioned this last time, but I thought the kids de deserved a picture. Congratulations to the National Art Honor Society uh, in their induction that was in March. Congratulations to all. Uh, Penwood International High School, I'm sorry, the Penwood High School International Dinner was fabulous. Uh, they danced, they did a fashion show, we had great food. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the best picture I had. It was amazing, it was very joyful. Uh, well over 100 folks. It was, it was really good. Congratulations. Uh, Penwood Jazz Band, second place finish at championships. Best sax section, best trombone section, and the soloist medal for tenor sax. Congratulations, all. All Delco athletes. Um, that's our list from uh, for this year from girls basketball, uh, boys basketball, and wrestling. So congratulations, all. Uh, buddy pair of the year, uh, congratulations to Tamara and Terrell. Uh, the buddy program is a uh, special ed children match with regular ed children. It's a fabulous program. Uh, it's what bocce comes out of, the bocce team, the bocce varsity team, and these were the buddy pair of the year. And there are some fabulous kids also. Uh, congratulations to Judy Jordan for winning Educator of the Year by the Spirit of the Dove. Uh, from the Darby Rex. Congratulations. That's all for this month. Thank you. Please reach out if you have some news. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, go, Mrs. So, thank you, Mrs. Paul. So, good evening. I also have several thank yous to shout out in my report this evening. Last week, we had our ELA review on Thursday and Friday. So I want to say thank you to the parents that came out to speak with the reviewers. Thank you to the principals for making the arrangements for the different focus groups um, to meet. There were teachers, students, and parent groups. Thank you to the teachers that were willing to participate in the focus groups. Thank you to the students that participated in the focus groups. Reviewers were amazed with our students. They had many compliments, such as they were well behaved, very articulate, gave insightful feedback, and, it's, and this one, that the students were worried their teachers may be in trouble because the reviewer was making notes, or taking notes. So teachers, the students are looking out for you. Um, thank you to Kyle Fortimus, the high school English department chair, for speaking with the reviewers to give them an overview of the high school scope and sequence both mornings. Thank you to Mr. McKay for the countless hours he's put into creating the tedious schedule for 12 different people to visit 11 different buildings throughout the district. Um, the lead reviewer, Dr. Mike Masco, upon leaving Friday afternoon stated to me, I have completed several program reviews across the state, but not one that was as well organized and where people were so accommodating and hospitable. So thank you to the reviewers that gave up a day or two to be in our district. Also tonight, you will see the third proposal for the 2018-19 school calendar. Thank you for the input and guidance from Lisa Bates and Becky Vandenberg for helping us make the adjustments necessary so we could put the spring break back in place and make sure we have the different PD dates in the right place. I'm just as happy about the staff in, as the staff in restoring spring break because I know that we all need that little mini vacation right before the fourth quarter starts. The only reason we did not have that spring break in the original release version was the state had scheduled um, PSSA during those two weeks, the week prior to Easter and the week after Easter. Our students and staff do so many amazing things throughout the year, and I appreciate that Ms. Hoff has made it evident in her board president reports. So I also want to share a couple of events that I attended last week. They were in her report. The Junior Honor, uh, High, the Junior High Honor Society induction. Um, thank you to Ms. Kristen Tiberzio for stepping up to sponsor this important group. And again, we had Mr. Hobson there and Ms. Miller, who's usually here. Her daughter, Nyla, was uh, eligible for this honor. I also attended the Partners in Education event, where our High Q team and Teacher of the Year were recognized. So thank you to Mr. Tommy Edwards, our High Q sponsor, and Mr. Matt Lindemann, Teacher of the Year, for attending this event. 
Students had a great time that evening and left well fed. That's a story for another time. A tremendous thank you to every staff member at the elementary and middle schools for the last two weeks during the PSSA testing window. Attendance by both staff and students was commendable. Everyone worked together to make the testing window not stressful for our students. As I was assisting and monitoring at one of our elementary buildings, I observed mindfulness routines, words of encouragement from everyone, and all parties involved working together to make the testing times seamless. Last but not certainly least, Dr. Lee released the names of the students making quarter three honor roll at the high school today. There were 369 names on that list, 25% of our students having a 3.0 or higher GPA. Thank you students and thank you teachers. I realize that inevitably I have left someone out, but I want to let all our staff know I may not observe everything you do for our students, but I do recognize all the hard work you are doing on a daily basis. So say, thank you. This is my report to the April board meeting, Mrs. Hall. Thank you, Ms. Harvard. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the agenda? Mm -hmm. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against? Uh, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of the business meeting of March 26, 2018? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, any corrections? I'm sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Uh, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of the committee meeting of April 16th? So moved. Any corrections? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Thank you. Mr. Randall, remarks, please. Yes, uh, Junior Prom. I just want to say uh, we had a great time, and I, I want to thank, a special thanks to Ms. Landrum, our advisor, for actually having it this year. So, had a board for actually doing the past. We had a good time. Yeah, so, that was fun. Um, also, for next year, in enhancing the culture of our school. Because I know it's going to be like a college based school, like college prep, fast track, and then slow track. Um, we had many students have a few questions about if there was going to be final exams included in this class. It's hard to hear. Okay. Final exams. Okay. Um, yeah, that's all. I'm just making, especially the students that didn't make honor, we also want to give them attention, you know, to make them to be more rigorous and gritty. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mr. Randall. Hello, everyone. I don't know. Hello, Sam, so everyone can see me. Um, so first news I just want to tell you guys is um, as a school, all the representatives came together and decided not to do the national walkout. Um, unfortunately, the walkout was scheduled on an in-service day, and we decided not to do it on the next day because the significance of that day wasn't clearly expressed to the whole student body, so we felt it wasn't best to do that. Um, instead, we took up a petition to our state representatives in light of our support for the end for gun violence, so that's what's going around currently. Um, as Ms. Um, Hoff said, the culture night was a big success, and it was really great having our students being knowledge on different cultures and what's going on. Um, another thing I wanted to say is currently I'm at Newman University for the Youth Leadership Academy, and these are all the schools in Delaware County, including Catholic schools, and it's a really great opportunity. And um, I'm really glad to be there. So everything I learned, you guys will be hearing about it next month. And lastly, um, I know we were fortunate enough to be able to sit in on the vice principal, the assistant principal interview. And I really want to thank you guys for allowing us to do that. So to whoever the new principal is, I just want to tell them, um, welcome to Penwood. And um, as a student board, we're doing everything we could to support you guys. And uh, thank you for choosing our school. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, good evening, everyone. Um, this upcoming Friday, we're having our jazz, pasta, and art night over at the middle school. It starts at 6.30 and it ends at 9.30 p.m. And so if you haven't yet received a form, I have a few extra copies here for you. Um, it's supposed to be really fun, so please come out and support our, our um, jazz band. Um, also, initially, the ninth grade class was supposed to be having a dance on April 28th, but unfortunately it got canceled because we didn't sell enough tickets. So I was hoping that we could have some sort of survey to see what the students really wanted, like what kind of dance they wanted, what kind of theme. That way they would be interested in going. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Stewart, very much. Thank you to our students. 
Uh, we have no special awards tonight. Are there any public comments regarding agenda items? Yes, sir. Well, hello. Name, where you live. Triple Block, the A to PA. Two questions, two comments. One is definitely an agenda item, and I'll ask if the second one is. Under the uh, new business, the diversity initiative, the uh, subcommittee concerning minority hiring. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to say it looks like uh, the vision statement and or the resolution is going to be either discussed or voted on this evening. Right. So I'm just giving my uh, personal input on, on how duly needed this is. Although in the past we've had uh, human resources and a regular process of hiring that did an adequate job on hiring of, of basic jobs, but apparently when it comes down to actual minority teachers, specifically male, black male teachers, it has not been as effective. So recently a new subcommittee has been put in place to help enhance the project process of hiring minority teachers and what as well as principals. So I'm just giving a uh, two thumbs up to the process that has been taking place thus far with this subcommittee, hoping that after the resolution, after the vision statement and the uh, other statement is put in place, we can then move forward to actually go to the next step, which is even stronger wording, which is actually an affirmative action plan, plan that needs to be put in place. So two thumbs up, keep up the great work. I hope you uh, vote on this this evening with a, uh, a full unanimous decision. And I'm looking forward to continuing on working with the subcommittee on minority diversity. And then uh, second point, I did not see it on the agenda, but I noticed several of our residents, not several, a few of our residents was coming here this evening to find out about the local earned income tax. So the question is, are we missing something? Because I know you had a leadership meeting with the different six boroughs to discuss the local earned income tax, the 1% income tax. So is that going to be discussed this evening at all, or is there something upcoming that we need to look forward to being a part of? It will not be discussed this evening. We will be coming to the boroughs as they request. I believe uh, they'll, be, they'll be in June in Yadin. Uh, we'll be in Derby in May. So that will be coming. We will bring that topic back up after budget season. So right. is there a deadline as to when anything has to be agreed on or not agreed on? No deadline. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes? Hey, uh, Troy Brooks, Yadin. Um, additions to the agenda, I was looking at the administrative staff that we did hire at the uh, two assistant principals. Um, they didn't get a chance to get by, but I wanted to know how did those interviews go and that, and that these two men are going to be able to adjust and come into the district and help us out. So the interviews went very well. We started with the interviews. Um, you know, it seems like forever now, back in April, we did a preliminary round of interviews, then we brought back in eight for a second round of interviews. At that interview, we had um, three board members present in the audience. We had six parents, we had three students, um, and we had um, six, I think five or six staff members. And then um, their input was taken, we then made the decision from um, the evidence documents that we collected. So these are the two that we're recommending to them. Okay. So you're both going to be working at, at here at Green Ave or they'll be split up to uh, I don't know that us. that decision has truly been made at this moment. That'll be part of the leadership team and the leadership team then will decide where the staffing will be. Anyone else? Yes? Randy Gardner, teacher, Philadelphia Derby. Um, in regards to the resolution, does the William Penn School District also have an anti-discrimination policy? Yes. That's a publication that we can all have? It, yes, there are already non-discrimination policies on the books. Okay. On the, like on the website that we can access? Or yes. Right? Thank you very much. And the second thing, in regards to the agenda item C8 for the administrative positions, were all internal candidates contacted and notified about the positions, about the hirings? 
Um, yes. They were all contacted, three person were personally spoke to. I don't think a message was left for one. I'm, I was just saying that because uh, I was the second round candidate, and this is the first I'm hearing about someone being hired. Mm -hmm. I didn't receive an email. I didn't receive a phone call. No one reached out and just gave me a courtesy saying, Mr. Carpenter, you know, work on this, work on that, but we hired someone else. Ouch. Just a common courtesy. That's all. No one contacted me. Um, anyone else? Yes, sir. Yes, um, good evening. Uh, Sandra Brown Wright from Gaydon. And I just wanted to uh, share information, a comment in reference to informational item C7, Summary of Recent Diversity and Minority Representation Subcommittee Meetings uh, with the two meetings that are listed in the agenda. I had the pleasure of attending the first meeting. Uh, we accomplished a lot. I was unable to attend the second meeting, but I do appreciate uh, Mr. Wright's leadership and the board's leadership with allowing me and anyone else to still submit information of concern. Uh, I thought that made the process very, very much accessible to the community and to the board and to the uh, members that are stakeholders for the education. So that was the point that I wanted to make, and as I stated, I wanted to thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, very done. Um, any communications, Mr. Cup? Sure, no communications. All right, committee reports. Uh, community relations, A1 senior earns a national award from the Alliance of Young Artists and Writers. That's Neil Larity. A2 Eastland Sun Elementary School group recognized for anti drug Park. Congratulations, Ms. Jackson, Ms. Fink, and the entire school. A3 middle school students inducted into, I'm sorry, into the National Junior Honor Society. Congratulations, inductees. It looks like it's around 13 of them. Uh, A4, the Partners in Education Celebration. Thank you to our partner, Franklin Credit Union, our high Q team. Uh, congratulations to Mr. Lindemann. Congratulations all, it's high cue for pretty uh, amazing. Uh, A5, uh, Penguin Marching Bands, Jazz, Pasta, and Art Night. This Friday, don't miss it. Uh, congratulations to Raheem Bowens, football standout to play in the 17th Annual Pennsylvania Scholastic Football Coaches Association East-West All-Star Game. <coughs> Try saying all that. Uh, A7, Spring Concert, please mark your calendars. Friday, May 4th, Hamlet High School, Thursday, May 17th, Bell Avenue, Wednesday, May 23rd, uh, the elementary uh, bands at the high school, and then Tuesday, May 29th, Walnut Street over at Walnut. So mark your calendars. They're all pretty spectacular. Um, A8, Walnut Street Elementary School receives an honorable mention as Philly's All-Star. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Kenneth Howard at a third grade teacher at Walnut Elementary School. Um, congratulations for that. Another mark your calendars. Um, Penwood Art Show and Sale, that is Thursday, May, May 17th from 6 to 8 p.m. Good luck trying to pry some of the artwork from our children. And uh, A10, um, Penwood Foundation Spring Showcase. Uh, please try to attend our Spring Showcase where we're just show off uh, what the monies we have donated uh, to our teachers and staff have done and we're going to pass on fun steam projects and then a11 uh, free summer meals for children just excuse me just to read that out uh, park lane elementary school and and penwood middle school will be offering meals uh, june 25th to july 26th um, breakfast is from 8 to 9, and lunch is from 11 to 12.30. Anyone under 18 may come. Meals must be consumed on the site. Um, A12, uh, the high school team wins the Boeing competition. Congratulations again. And Ardmore Avenue Elementary School and Penwood Middle School students win awards in the STEM Challenge at the IU. And congratulations, Lansdowne Upper Darby Rotary Club, April Students of the Month. Nana Asamoa and Talis Gamer. Congratulations, students. Thank you. Education, Ms. Boykin. Good evening, everyone. 
Uh, we had a uh, education meeting. Um, our next education meeting will be um, May 16th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we had a great education meeting and just uh, a recap. We talked about um, curriculum. Mr. McKay, he uh, came in and discussed our curriculum. And then we also had Dr. Lee present and she discussed uh, college prep fast track and regular track and she explained the differences between our college prep track and our uh, regular versus fast. Um, we had some follow-up questions that uh, people put down. We have cards in the back that during our education meeting that you can ask questions that you know necessarily might not be on the agenda. So questions were um, posed and at our next meeting we will be doing those follow answering those follow-up questions and also what we have um, Ms. Greenstein wasn't able to attend that meeting to speak on special education but she will be at the May 16th meeting to discuss special education so if anyone has any type of questions about special education in the curriculum I ask that you come on out uh, to, uh, on, to that night May 16th at 6 30 p.m. Um, and also we talked about communication where we're going to discuss with regard to college prep, regular track and fast track, how do we put, bring this out to our community um, and our, um, our parents to let them know more information about um, college prep, fast track and regular track. So those things will be discussed and um, next thing on there is also to talk about the sciences. So we'll, um, we'll have some representation to also talk about our science curriculum as well. So just to let you know when the next meeting is, because I noticed it was not on um, the paperwork in the back, so I just want to make sure everybody knows. So <clears throat> education committee um, agenda, B1, homebound instruction, B2, termination of homebound instruction, B3, revised 2017-2018 uh, school calendar, uh, B4, proposed 2018-2019 school calendar, B5, Armour Elementary School is uh, sixth grade, having a sixth grade uh, student trip to Hershey Park. And B6, Pimblet Middle School, eighth grade student um, trip to Six Flags Great Adventure. Um, we have to make, before I make a motion to approve it, uh, the agenda, one more thing I wanted to add is another education. Um, on April 25th, um, if you can come on out to the Darby Recreation Center, they'll be talking about, um, they're trying to educate youth with regard to uh, drug education. So they want more kids to know more about drugs. Um, the use, um, first drug use they say is 13 years old. You know, um, each day we have 2,500 teens that try prescription drugs. Um, also, it's, it's known that one in five teens abuse prescription drugs. So that's something else that, if, you know, if you can get the word out, um, April 25th at Darby Recreation Center, um, Janelle Fran, she's running that. And I think it will be a great event for a lot of kids to go go to. And parents also, parent involvement will be great um, for that as well. What time? Um, it says, I'm sorry, it says 6.30 p.m. at the Darby Recreation Center. Um, and it's drug education. We really need that um, in our community. Thank you, Ms. Boykins. Can I have a motion? Second. Second? Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any discussion? All those in favor? Anyone against? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, personnel, Mr. Wright. Uh, thank you. Um, C1 resignation support staff. C2 appointments. Professional staff. A, B, special education mentoring mm -hmm. stipend. C, Neva absent. C4 compensation, Neva absent. C6 summer office hours. C7, Summary of Recent Diversity Minority Representation Subcommittee Meeting. C8, Appointment of Administrative Staff. And uh, I will hold that off for a few minutes. Uh, what I would like to say, uh, or what was already said earlier, so I don't have to add too much, uh, and I will mention this during the resolution. I uh, really want to thank everyone for their strong participation in this. A long endeavor, I can say for me, it's been over 15 years to really get to this point. Uh, we may not, it may not be perfect, hopefully, that we're beginning to work towards uh, accomplishing that. Uh, I really appreciate your presentation with talking about our history, and I personally share with her that my wife and I were 
friends of Dr. A. Robinson, mm -hmm. uh, who would bring in the shares of somehow Princess and, and the books that he made, and he fought for having African American history study in Philadelphia. And hopefully, what you're saying that we can do, and we, and we found out what Dr. A. Robinson, when he talked about diversity and understanding culture, that will help to improve where we are with corrected history, and that all the diaspora count. We can learn from the Hispanic community, we can learn what African American studies learn from each other's culture and build on it. And somehow, that always been a problem. And one of the persons that really acknowledged me who also passed away with, uh, uh, from, uh, from uh, he was from uh, the charter school in Philadelphia, John Skeet. He was a legend. I remember I had to sit with him all the time to learn about it. He said, when I did a presentation at Chain University on this very topic, so we, and he said, we all learned from each other. We all connected together. And but you had to have corrected history. So this diversity committee that we set up that we are moving towards sharing because we're still 16% of teachers. We have done better with administrators, but we can still do a whole lot better in that area. So, uh, but I will be talking about that further. What I would like to say before we take a vote, uh, and I shared earlier during the pre-session, uh, the school climate is one of the areas that I'm not proud of and I think others will share with that. Is that all-time love? And I've always been a champion supporting bringing externals in, candidates in. But there's times you, you amend that and you see that to achieve where we need to go with the school climate, we'd be better off hiring the internal candidates. So I will be on record. I'm not going to vote no, which would be very easy for me, on the two candidates and me being the chairman. So I would abstain because I still believe that we should have went with the internal. So you can mark me down for abstaining on the two candidates. Um, I have a question. I would like to know with regard to what vote if we can sever. So we're making a motion to sever? Yes, that's all. May I have a second to sever the vote? All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Anyone against? Okay, great. <laughs> All right. Um, so, any comments from? May I have a second on Mr. Wright's agenda? Second. Any comments for the board? <laughs> All right. So we're voting on C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, and C7. Yes. What? Oh, okay, sorry, C says. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against? All right. Um, C8, uh, we'll take them one at a time. A, A1, James Corkery. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against? Okay. I'll stay. Okay. I'm going to take a roll call. Okay, roll call. Go roll call. I just missed okay. 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 I, I thought we were just breaking apart C8 from the other ones. I'm going to be doing each candidate. Did you want to break them? I'm yes, sorry. Yes, I would like to break each candidate. Okay, great. Okay, okay. so the question is do you want a roll call or are you just want to. Do a roll call. Do a roll call. Can Mr. Rego right. say? Generally speaking, abstentions are limited to conflict. So you're not going to vote no? You could obviously vote no. Right. All right. Uh, roll call, Mr. Cuff. On Corkery. Okay, this is. For number one, A. Correct. So I'll go okay. This is for the. This is for one. Man. This is for this is for one. This is for yeah. James Gordon. Yes. Mr. Yeah. Wright. Uh, no. Ms. Boykins. No. Mr. Hobbs. Yes. Ms. Curley. No. Ms. Yeah. Phillips. Yes. Ms. Richardson. No. Yes. Ms. Hobbs. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what's the number? So you have five, five yes votes and three no votes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Curry, roll call, please. Two. Okay. Mrs. Fritty? Yes. 
Mr. Wright? No. Ms. Boykins? Yes. Mr. Hobbs? Yes. Ms. Ms. Sprayley? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Ms. Richardson? Yes. Ms. Hoff? Yes. Okay. Congratulations, yes. folks. Yes. See you July 1st. Our property, Mr. Hobbs, please. Two items there, the contracted services uh, uh, with Aramark to give that to them. That's a one-year uh, contract with four-year renewal, one-year renewals to follow that. Internet service provider done with DCIU. Uh, we're getting more for less. There you go. Um, may I have a second of Mr. Hobbs's uh, agenda, please? Any questions on property? Uh, Hearing none. All yes, sir. Um, have we done a thorough uh, facility check on all our buildings? That's that's. Mr. Cuff. Have we done a facility check on all the buildings? Yes. So that's not related to this, right. but. Yes, okay. so we had a, when we switched out the manager, we went through every building with the new person that worked in our manager from Airmark, along with our representatives from internally, and we met with every building principal over the last two months. And we went through that, so that's still, and, but that's still an ongoing process. Right. So do we have a list, because hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I would like to start traveling around, particularly the school, in you know in the area that I represent to see if there's anything they need that may be overlooked. Well, sure, you could do. That. I'm, I'm sure they have a list of items that they listed and that they met with the principal and went over. So I'm pretty sure they can get that to you. you know, All right, thank you. All right. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against? Thank you. Uh, Budget and finance, uh, Mr. Richardson, please. City wanted to try to report A2 list of bills, A3 to Delaware County Community College 2018 2019 budget. And to see the enrollment at Delaware County Community College for the year 2016 17 included over 1,100 residents from the Round Penn School District. So the motion to adopt the resolution approving the budget of the Delaware County Community College. For the fiscal year, July 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2019. Thank you. May I have a second? I second. Any uh, questions from the board? All those in favor? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm in the corner here. Yeah. Uh, I want to abstain on E1 and E2. Okay. May I ask why? I, well, I have questions and I like to meet with you. Okay. Yeah, and again, just you know, whatever are going to do whatever they do, but generally speaking, abstentions are just for conflicts of interest. I, yeah, oh, okay. You want to bring out why? No, no. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, it's going to take you another 45 minutes. Okay. All right. Well, and I forgot, we are going to have a budget and finance meeting following the next committee meeting of the whole, which is um, May 21st, 2018. Thank you. All those in favor? Uh, anyone against? Thank you. Uh, policy, Ms. Finney, please. Yes. F1, second reading, reverse policy, 626-906-906-ARL, 906-AR198, 98-AR1, and 918-AR3. Uh, first reading of the pol reverse policy of 501, 538, and 239. Um, next month on May 20th. Hold on one second. Yeah, what, Can I, I get a second? I'm sorry. Second. And go, all right, now. I don't have to make the motion. I can just go, right? Yeah, you can, because I'm adding you on the comments to. On May 21st, I'm going to have a policy meeting in regards to uniform. I'm going to have principals, parents, and students to come in and give me their ideas of what they want, and we're going to discuss what we need. Thank and you. And it's at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock in this room. Any uh, questions from the Board of School Board Directors? Hearing none, all those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Anyone against? All right, new business. Diversity initiative. A. Vision statement. The Board of School Directors and Administrators of the William Penn School District commit to ensuring all students receive high quality, culturally affirming instruction by setting a goal to increase the percentage of professional staff slash educators of color. The motion is to adopt the vision statement of the diversity initiative as indicated above. So moved. Um, I need a second. 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 Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Okay. B, mission statement. The professional staff of the William Penn School District will reflect the racial and cultural diversity of our community and student body. Motion to adopt the mission statement of the diversity initiative as indicated above. So moved. Any, thank you. Any conversation? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Okay, C, uh, the resolution in support of increased recruitment, hiring, and retention of professional staff, school leaders, and administrators of color. The school board directors of the William Penn School District commits to ensuring that all students, ensuring all students receive high quality, culturally affirming instruction by setting a goal to increase the percentage of professional staff and educators of color. This resolution sets improved recruitment and hiring practices. The motion is to adopt the resolution as indicated above. There should have been resolutions in the back. We just we made one change in pre-session, um, and that is to the fourth paragraph. Whereas the importance of recruiting, hiring, and retaining more professional staff, teachers and staff of color, for students of color is well reported and evidenced through, through peer review journals. Research. Thank you. Uh, may I have a first and a second? So moved. Second. Okay. Any comments or questions from the board school board directors? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against? We'll make those changes and get that signed and get that off to everyone. Um, yes. All right, thank Mr. you. Mr. Wright had asked for, uh, previously asked, to say a couple of words and what you can do. Uh, yes, it would be a couple of words. First, I think I said it. Um, I have been very impressed with the Minority Subcommittee on Diversity. I think it has been one of the best committees that I have worked on in going in my 12th year in Winton School District. There was a cross section of diversity you know, of staff, the administrators, staff, board members educators and members from the community and I hope I didn't leave anyone out. It was a committee that came in with a sole purpose to correct what was wrong in the Winfield School District and that we can move forward and not only become a model for the Winfield School District, but hopefully become a model for Delaware County. So tonight I want to recognize everybody. I want to like for them to stand up and hopefully give them a applause. That includes everybody who participated on the committee. I'd like for everybody to stand up, please. <laughs> uh, thank you. But I do have one more request to really make this perfect. I would like to know where the union stand on this issue, that are they supported? Because like I said, this is not an issue where we are at war. We are just trying to correct it. We can all come out to work together holistically. So I'd like to know where the union, I remember 15 years ago, the union was wanting to sit behind this. So I'd just like to hear just a comment that you the supporters of this. Mr. Wright, we're not going to ask for a back and forth comment this evening. I, but, I put this up, I know, hold on a second. I brought this up last month, so when right. we get a request from the uh, union. You know, we'll put, it, we'll put it out and we'll ask them to give us a statement on it. We're not going to go back and forth. All right, what I'm saying is, uh, are we going to do that? Yes, yes. We're absolutely going to do, do that. that. And then I would not do it next month. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Wright, can I, can I reach out directly to PSEA at the state level? Oh, uh, yes, you can. Great. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Tom. All right, so once again, thank you for your support. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
and great work, everyone. Uh, new business, uh, two, election of intermediate unit board members uh, to approve the resolution electing the above listed individuals to serve as members of the Delaware County Intermediate Unit Number 25 Board of Directors. Um, we have a first and a second. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? All right. Board members, please remember you must speak. <coughs> so it's hers. Minutes, where is uh, um, William Penn? Uh, yeah, I, I believe that we should be coming up. Uh, there just must be a, a cycle that's going to Yeah. All right, reports. Uh, Delaware County Community College, Mr. Wright. Oh. Oh, sorry. No report. Solicitor, no report. Thank you. Um, no. Oh, is there any old business, Mr. Cuff? Sorry. Any new business, Mr. Cuff? No, 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 no. All right. All right. Mr. Wright, Delaware County Community College. Uh, yes, I spoke to Ms. Harper last week. One of the things I would like to continue, we always continue Delaware County uh, uh, STEM program, which has always been very, you know, very exciting. And what does the other half to the STEM program when we have this meeting is to attend high-tech manufacturing uh, jobs for our students to be able to see it. So I plan to meet with Ms. Harper and making sure that everything is in place, including the student permission slip. <laughs> and I'm going to make it a I know, but, 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 but I'm saying, yes, it is. But what it's saying is, and so that we will move towards that and it'll be, hopefully, we will meet in the morning. I'll meet with some of, um, some of the facilitators of Delaware County who set this up. Great. Thank so you. So we have to the piece to present. So we can go with that school. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Uh, Delaware County Intermediate Unit, Ms. Fiddy. Good evening, everybody. We meet twice a month. One, the first Monday of the month, Wednesday, we meet all. The second is the voting meeting. Uh, Delaware uh, County Intermediate Unit, the Astro Tech, is being built up like crazy. They're going to have a lot of programs. They're going to contact you, Jane, in regards to come and talk to our 10th grade students, what it can be offered to you, robotics, culture, your, your culinary. It, it's going to be fabulous. So first the tour, the Falkroff meeting next Wednesday, and then after that, the Ashton. I hand everybody a pamphlet today to speak. There's a breakfast coming up in May. Did you all receive that? Yep. yep. Okay. And also, um, there's a lot of new things going on out there that's going to help our children. I'm trying to get it geared for ninth grade, but I'm being told we can't because they have to have so many credits in order to so it's going to hit the tenth grade. But I am working very hard, and there is a lot out there to offer you. So they may even join our job fair also. Great. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Thank and you. Also, um, awesome. And also, uh, the STEM gentleman out there, I'd like them to come to the next Education meeting for Ms. Monique. Clear that with Ms. Monique. Yeah. And then we'll I think the next month is probably pretty busy for Ms. Boyk and she's already got her schedule set up. <laughs> we were, um, I need to get contact with like if anybody has any information. I'll get his card. Email or something. Great. Or you Great. Can talk to him. Great. Thank you, Ms. Finney. Thank you, Ms. Boykins. Uh, so, Delaware County Legislative Council. Truthfully, I've been a little uh, mixed with my Legislative Council reports. Mm -hmm. So now we have something in paper. So every month I'm going to choose four or five House or Senate bills that I think are egregious or the Legislative Council thinks is egregious. And on the back side is the person that you call. Please don't email them or mail them. You must call them because that is the only thing they're tracking. So tonight, uh, SB2, the Education Savings Accounts, at 3.30 this evening, your job got easier because that's been taken off the docket. Uh, so continue making those calls on SB2. Um, there's, there's also some of these over at the side table if anybody wants it. Uh, Senate Bill 1095, which are to the high school graduation requirements. This bill, for some reason, has lots of other junk thrown in it. I know it's a typical political move. But 1095 needs us to look at it really, really hard. Uh, 
they figured out that they can't make keystones work and we just need to make sure that it adequately uh, covers us. House Bill 1213 are restrictions on property assessment appeals. It would basically tie the hands of the district when it comes to uh, for defending ourselves on assessments. Um, and it's really not good for our district. Uh, Senate Bill 1078, uh, this is a good bill. I just want to be clear. Uh, this is allows us to talk about security matters in executive session as a school board. And why that's important is because you wouldn't want to broadcast your security measures to everyone um, because that could make you vulnerable. And that uh, has to go to the House next, and then it will be 60 days, but that will be law. That has a clear shot to go through. So again, um, my email's on this. If you have anything to share with me, please do. Uh, please call your legislators. They should know you by first name. Oh, it's you again. Please call them. Um, yeah, did I? Did they were in the packets, but. No, oh, I just I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I yeah. thought that was yours that you were. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. Um, comments from citizens regarding non agenda items. Yes, Mr. Carpenter. Uh, first thing I wanted um, to state, Mr. Wright stole some of my thunder in terms of the climate of the school district. <coughs> and I just want to say, Dr. Ivy Brown, Joseph Williams, Brian Wilson, Bevan Layton, Jason Harris, Patricia Stewart, Melissa Bowden, all um, minorities all promoted internally from teachers to administrators in this district. Dr. Catherine Garner, John Larry, Frank Bruno, Tim McKay, Chip Safuni, Seth Bruner, Dr. John Coyle, Beth Kramer, all promoted from um, teachers to administrators in this district. So we do have a history of promoting internal candidates and grooming internal candidates. Uh, even one of the gentlemen you hired tonight, prior to him being a principal, he spent four years previously as a math teacher in that same school. So it, it, call, it, it shows you that you can groom internal candidates and you can take them to the next level. And I also just ask that we review that if internal candidates are not making these jumps and if all of a sudden we become stagnant with this regardless of color, then what are we doing at the top that is different than when we were um, allowing internal candidates to secure administrative positions in terms of professional development? What are we doing when we come back from break? What are we doing in the summers? How are we, how are we working with our teachers? Because you want everyone to be top notch and it, it sounds even better when they're coming as internal candidates. Another thing, um, I strongly believe in this district and I remember during a few of the board meetings, um, you guys were looking for feedback from the public in terms of uh, you know ways to fix the budget, um, how we go about finances and everything. So me, I'm just research based. So what I figured I could do on behalf of the district is utilize my strength, which is emotional support. So what I did was I just looked at your district plan, the one that was published in July of 2017, you can pass those around. Um, you may have to share, only made 30 copies. And I, I just wanted to focus on behavior. So on page, I numbered them, you know, I want to say favor. Number two, it says that we have an anchor program that provides behavioral supports and that it also, uh, they process student behaviors for each student after they've been de-escalated, receptive to process the events that led to the behavior, and social workers who provide mental health counseling and social work services. Data is kept and analyzed on a frequent basis. The district has recently begun to implement an electronic daily report card that can be accessed by all teachers and parents of a particular student. Do we still currently have that daily report card? that these students are receiving. That's in the district plan on page 53. 
<laughs> yes, I'm going back to think about it. So then what I did, I said, well, okay, how are we implementing that? And I remember in mid 2015, towards the end of the 2014, 2015 school year, it was either uh, Ms. Monique Boykins or Mr. Robert Wright, because they were sitting right there, and we had a presentation by, by Green Street. They brought a teacher in. They brought a parent in with, with, a, with a student. And one of you, I'm not sure which one of you was, you asked for data. You are we getting our bang for the buck? What data supports you actually being a part of the school district? So that's, and then it says on page three, of course, 2016-17, that Child Guidance Resource Center would uh, provide behavioral analysis, functional behavioral assessments, positive behavior support plan development for students, and consultative supports for teachers of students who exhibit disruptive, dangerous, or inappropriate behaviors in school. Doesn't, uh, you know, so, in school, right? So I said to myself, we're doing the curriculum evaluation, you know, we have the DCIU come in, you know, we should do the same thing with contractors, and this, this is where I'm going with this. And if you turn to the final page, page four, because I love saving paper, you have 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18. You have the uh, amount of behavior managers provided, clinician therapists, service restrictions, cost, total, and notes in terms of services they provide. All of this is um, in the agendas for each of those years. That's where I got the notes from for services they provided. So I figured a great way for us to evaluate this program is to actually go back for the last three years and access this data. In terms of data, I mean these programs are tailored for individuals. So there should be individual data for every student that's entered and exited this program within the last three years. And I say three years again because if you are dealing with some type of special education lawyer, they are initially allowed to go back three years. So we need to make sure that our provider has that data available so we are covered as a school district. And it also will measure the effectiveness of the program. Look at the data trends. So they're saying they're going to give us this data. Um, we should be able to review it in terms of reviewing it. I know there's always the issue with FERPA and stuff like that. The good thing is anyone that has an educational interest in the student can review the data. So that could be whether it's Ms. Greenstein, Jane and whoever they picked for the team, but review these last three years, review the data, first of all, make sure it's all there so we're not liable, and measure the, pro the program effectiveness. Make sure that these services that were provided in the board agenda, that were listed in the board agenda, were provided to our students. You know, let's make sure we're getting the bang for the buck, and because I'm looking at it, and last three years, $1.8 million. 1.8 million spent total on child guidance services. And I just want to make sure that as a district that we can validate spending 1.8 million dollars on these services. Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. Have a great day. Thank you. Yes. That's good. All right, anyone else on non-agenda items? That's good. Yes. Yeah. Uh, anyone else on non-agenda items? Well, can you eventually add this to your education plan? Sure. <laughs> I, I said eventually, I didn't say this year. Agenda plan for this. Yeah. Anyone? On non agenda items? I'd, I'd like to ask a question. Let me know if it's a non agenda item. Just based on Mr. Carpenter's earlier question that did not get answered, should it have gotten, should it have, should it have gotten answered concerning the point? I, I don't know the answer to the question, and I need to get back to it. I, I need to do a little fact check. Anyone else? All right, I want to, I'd like to, excuse me, excuse me. There was a question that you didn't get answered that was earlier. You didn't get an answer. I, I just said. No, not that one. Okay, what was the question? The question that was raised from Yaden that you would attend for the earned income tax. Correct. But you didn't get a date. No, they, it hasn't been arranged yet. Uh, Ms. Rebecca's working me out with Ms. Monroe. All right, so we'll announce it. Yeah, because the public is asking yeah, me. Some of work. course. Yes. Uh, I'm saying, right. not, I know our rule, yeah. but you make sure. Yes. Because there's a lot of this, this is not our fault. 
a lot of miscommunications out in engagements about this meeting. And I'd like to get a good night's sleep. We all would. Um, announcement of future meetings. Uh, community relations. One second. Yeah, a question. I'm sorry. Um, yes, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, and I don't, again, this is one of those questions that may or may not, the board okay. may not be prepared to answer. Okay. Uh, uh, can you stand up so you're Yes, talking? I'm sorry. Uh, Dr. Matthew Lammons, I was just asking about the information that the Carmen shared. I wasn't sure, was he asking us to do, is he, are you at, no. is he okay. asking, I'm sorry, is he He's asking, asking us the, to review this information oh, and, and, a, and get the data and, and make sure we're spending our money well. May I ask what this contract is it's a year. Okay. It's a year. Up, up in May? Probably so in July. Yeah, July. Let's get the data. Right. And well, then the other question is that um, I saw that on page three had underlined that the cost was four sixty, but the yeah. the four hundred sixty thousand, but the numbers are almost two hundred thousand dollars more a year. Or is that or are these two different sets of numbers? Um, well, this is, that's know. one thing I was actually, I'm, I'm sorry. No, oh, no, you're fine, you're fine. Because it says, you know, they said, we'll put this on your education. I just have a question for you because this is the first time I'm seeing what you're presenting, okay? So my question is, is that you're presenting this data for us to look into it? Are you presenting this data to say, hey, we don't have it? Why are you presenting? That's what I'm trying to get to. What's right. the purpose? Okay, I'm presenting this data for several things. Um, I was inspired by the curriculum review for SFA. Okay. So my thinking was that if you guys spent 1.8 million and you asked in 2015 for data to support using this program, three years later, you still don't have anything. Mm -hmm. You have no data, and then it was also from another perspective, but you got to think. Lawyers can go back three years. Like, okay. why make ourselves... Why are, why are you assuming we don't have data? Um, no, she asked the question. Are you, you not, uh, here's the thing. Once again, she asked for the data in 2015. It's 2018. They never came and presented to the board. So unless you have your own copy of the data, it's, three, it's been three years. I, I was I was unaware. Of, didn't remember the public meeting. Yeah, that's okay. That's wrong. Yeah, I'm not saying you don't have any data. Thank you. you guys in the board actually have data, and I was just saying, and I'm not even. I'm like my concern is just the same way you guys review SFA and everything else. Review this program. If you spent 1.8 million in three years, I mean, you know, you don't go to, you don't go to PetSmart and, and buy invisible fish. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So your point is, okay. Um, Mr. Carpenter, I would like you to definitely, um, I would like to get your information so I can reach out and talk to you. And then also, um, I would also like you to come to our next um, meeting, our education meeting also. Um, on May 16th as well. Okay. So I'll talk to you afterward to get your information. Yes. And um, so we can look into this. Okay. Thank you so much for presenting this. No problem at all. All right. Uh, community relations this Thursday at 6:30 in this room. Uh, diversity and minority uh, subcommittee May 3rd in this room at 6:30. Uh, on May 16th we'll have an education committee meeting 6:30 in this room. Uh, Policy committee is 6 o'clock on Monday, May 21st. Then the committee of the whole is at 6.30 to 7.30 on May 21st. Then a budget meeting after the committee of the whole, so it's a trifecta of meetings on May 21st. And then Tuesday, May 29th, Monday is uh, Memorial Day. We'll have a pre-session in this room at 6.30 and a regular session at 7.30. And also, once again, education meeting is not one here, but please put in your calendar. I just said it. Educa I said it. She's right. It's not on there. I, 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 I was just letting everybody yeah. know. Yeah. I didn't see it on here. Yeah. It's like, where is it? Yeah. Yeah. We have a motion to so adjourn. This. So, 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 so,